All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Closers or Losers. It's me and the man, the myth, the legend, the one-legger bandit, Jeremy Miner. Mr. Old Man Yoda himself, you're like the Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm Yoda, and our vice president of sales is like Luke Skywalker. That's how I look at the, yeah. how old I am compared to you guys. It's just like, I'm the old guy around here. Mar- Marco actually called me Uncle Jay the other day. I'm like, Uncle? Uncle Jeremy. Like, what? <laughs> I've made the uncle list since I hit my 40s now? What the hell's going on? <laughs> well, he's only 26. Right. He's only 26? He's a baby, he's oh, a baby good yeah. Lord. Good Lord, he's a baby. I know. Well, there you go. Yeah. He's moving up the company pretty quick. All right. So, <laughs> hey, we're happy to have everybody on here today. Listen in. So, closers or losers, what are we doing here today? If this is your first time you've been with us, I'm the chairman of Seventh Level. This is our CEO, Matt Ryder. And we're a company that helps sales professionals like you, coaches like you, executives, business owners. And we help you transform the way you sell by learning specific, skilled, techniques that work with human behavior rather than work against it. We're going to go over that today on closing. You're going to learn how to ask commitment questions instead of close. These are called neuroemotional persuasion questions, NEPQ, teach you the right tonality to put your prospects at ease, eliminate sales pressure, and get them to persuade themselves. So I'm excited about the topic we're going to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about what does closing actually mean? Like, what does closing actually mean? You know, when I first got into to selling, when I was a 21-year-old little punk, you know, even younger than our uh, our Jedi uh, Mark over there, our VP, <laughs> I read these books. Like, the company gave me all these books. And I remember the books. And, and there's no uh, offense to anybody. I mean, these guys <coughs> have books. They've sold a lot of books, and that's great. But I got books like The Sales Bible with Jeffrey Gitmer. I got books by a good friend of mine, Brian Tracy, actually, uh, one of my first mentors. I, I liked a lot of his stuff, Psychology of Selling. I got books by, uh, oh, what are those guys? Uh, like Grant Cardone and Jordan Belfort. And look at these bookshelves here. I, just all these books. Uh, what was his name? The guy that sold real estate, Tom Hopkins. You know, I got all these books, like mm. hardcore, like ABCs of closing, always be closing. Get ABC, a book baby. Would, I would get a book that would say, 1,001 ways to close a sale. Or, you know, and I'm just like, how am I going to remember the 1,001 ways for every situation? Like, what, what, what's, it was like, it, my, it boggled my mind. And I remember going out and using those techniques. And my first sales job I got was selling door to door. I was selling alarms and I would go out there, knock on the doors and do my little spill. And then I'd be like, so do you want us to have it installed on Monday or Tuesday at one or, or Wednesday at two? And they're like, we're not interested. Yeah. Slam. And I'm the, just like, the binary well, close. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, but 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 the, the the sales Bible book said that I need to ask the option close. Like, why is it not working 97.6% of the time? And it didn't, it, it took me actually a, a couple months of getting like a million gazillion doors slammed in my face to realize that, man, when when you use a lot of these these techniques, and I didn't know they were old school at that time, I thought they were new school, that they just trigger resistance and they cause a lot of objections that you get. What what are your thoughts on that? I think, I think it's an interesting one. Like, cause I, I was taught very similar to you. I was taught the binary close system, you know, like it's the, <laughs> right. basically the option close. It's like, okay, so would you like, would it, would it be better for you to pay in a payment plan or all upfront payment plan? Okay. And would you like to do two pay or three pay, three pay? Okay. Would you like to start on Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Okay. So let's get started. Well, and it's like, we're, we're taught that, that you can trick people into buying. Like if they say yeah. yes, nine times, the 10th will be a yes. It's like, that is... <laughs> <laughs> so outrageously not true. How stupid do you think people are? But I think that one of the really I get asked this question a lot. And what would you say in this situation? What would you say in that situation? And which is like, yeah. yeah, okay, we can go over that. But what I'd love to hear is like, because any PQ is, is stacked, right? So you've got connection, situation, problem awareness, solution awareness, yeah. consequence questions. Yeah. Like what I'd love to hear you break down today, because this is what will actually help people close. Yeah. Why did you stack it that way? Well, okay. So my background is behavioral science and human psychology. So remember, go, go, let's go back to my story. You know, the, the little 21 year old kid in college, who's trying to survive door to door sales. His manager gives him all the books like Jeffrey Gitmer and Tom Hopkins and, you know, Joe Girard, the greatest salesman in the world book that sold a gazillion Zig cars yep. in 1963. Zig Ziglar that said, you got to be really enthusiastic and they're going to be excited too. Well, what's the problem with that is that 
I mean, I love those guys, but they they grew up selling in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, maybe early 90s, and the consumer was completely different. We didn't have social media. We didn't have the power of the internet. They couldn't go look up all these reviews online. They, they didn't know anything about you unless you did ads on like newspaper ads or TV or radio ads. That's how they would know about your products or services. But now with the power of the internet, especially social media, we just live in a completely different age. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they know everything about you by Type it in your name on Google and in 10 seconds, they know your price points and who your competitors are and how long you've been in business. And if people say bad things about your company or whatever, they know everything yeah. about you. Well, I mean, who is that girl that sold the Eiffel Tower three times? You know? So what? They sold the Eiffel Tower three times. Was it, <laughs> was, was, it, was, it, was, it, was it Ponzi? Was that what he did? I can't remember. Uh, there was the guy who that. sold the Eiffel Tower three times and then he got chased out of France and then he moved to New York and he sold the Statue of Liberty twice. Oh, right, okay. so... You know, like, so I think, I think people, not that people were stupid back then, but people were, you know, we were in our infancy of complex yeah. communication. Human yeah. beings are not very old. You know what yeah. I mean? So like our, and I'm sure in 2000 years, if God willing, human beings are still on the planet or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Be looking back and being like, look at these morons. You know, what, you these, know what I mean? Look at the way morons communicated. No, yeah. but so my background is behavioral science and human psychology. That was my major in college. So I was reading all these old school sales books. I didn't know they were old school at the time. I thought they were the latest, greatest things. This was like in 2000, 2001, 20 years ago. Okay. And then my professors in college, I was learning about Socrates and I was learning about all these great communicators throughout history. Even like Jesus Christ himself was like the greatest communicator. And I was learning and I would analyze what they would say and what they would ask. And I was like, wow, they attracted thousands of people to follow them. They attracted all this following and just people did, I mean, they would lose their lives for them. Like, how did they do it? Right. And so my professors would break that down. And I'm like, what my professors are teaching me about how human behavior works is completely different than what all these gurus are teaching me. I mean, it was like, it couldn't be more different. And I'm like, how do I take what I'm learning about humans, like human behavior and neuroscience, like how the brain makes decisions, how can I incorporate that into selling? And I went like literally looking around the globe. I, I mean, early internet days, 2001, 2002, you know, go to, go to the, I don't even remember if Google was around. I don't know who it was, but anyways, AOL, maybe I don't even remember, but I would remember like searching for these sales courses and seminars. And I was like a junkie, man. Like I would read like eight books of a freaking month. I'd read a book like every two days, every weekend. I was like a seminar junkie. I was one of those guys that would be at a, at a, at a weekend retreat, like every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday trying to learn this stuff. And I found that everything really out there that I saw for the first couple of years was really just re garbage, repackaged stuff from everybody else's. It was just a different spin of the option clothes and they would call it the binary clothes or it was the demonstration clothes or the puppy dog clothes or the Benjamin Franklin clothes. And I found that everything was really <laughs> similar. I, there's a clothes <laughs> called the Benjamin Franklin clothes. That, that only works for one leggers though. We, we got to get, I know, <laughs> we got to get into that one day. So anyways, what I did is I'm like, how do I structure? So I started asking, so I started learning human behavior and I came up with these questions. Okay. And I started asking them and I'm like, wow, these really work. Like people are opening up to me, but then I would ask something wrong and they would close down. And I'm like, I'd have to eliminate that question and replace it with something else. And so I started coming up with like, okay, when I first start talking to somebody, I'm connecting with them. So I'm going to call those connecting questions. That's how I came up with connecting questions. And then okay. I'm like, okay, so, so now that so I've what got are you, I'll just, I'll stop you. Cause I, uh, so what are you, what are you hoping to gain out of that series of questions? Well, connecting questions, we're taking the focus off of you, the salesperson, and we're putting it on them because what most salespeople do when they first start talking is all the focus is on them. They're like, hi, John, I'm with XYZ company. And the reason why I called you today is blah, 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 blah. And it's, it's like the focus is all on you trying to prove that you have something awesome. So I'm yeah. like, how do we put the focus on them and get them curious enough where they want to engage? So that's where I came up with the engagement. I called that the engagement process. That's where I came up with that. I'm like, how do I get them to engage? I remember reading a book on Socrates and the professor's like, Socrates was the best at getting people to engage. And I'm like, oh, engage. And so it kind of like warped into the engagement stage. That's where I came up with the engagement stage. This is all crazy. This took, you know, several years to develop. So connecting questions, put the focus on them, take it off you. And then I'm like, okay, now I need to find out what they currently have in place to solve the problem. 
And so I first came up with something called like background, like I need to get their background. And I'm like, no. And I, and I noticed another sales trainer had that. I'm like, I need to uh, rename that. And I called it situation questions. So I want to find out what their present situation is. Okay. A lot of salespeople like talk about their present state or their current state and their future state. So I'm like, okay, what's their present situation? And their present situation is we're finding out what their situation is like now. Not really much emotion out of there, but we're finding the facts, okay? So like, let's say if we're talking to a company about sales training, we're trying to find out, walk me through. One of the first questions we ask a company, Matt, you know, this is, I mean, you, you do some of these calls with their VPs and stuff like that. But one of the course questions we ask is, okay, so walk me through, if I'm a salesperson for you, walk me through what my training would look like when I started with your company. And then they walk that's us a, through. That's, a, that's actually a very awkward question for a lot of companies because they're like, uh. They're like, uh, well, we teach them how the product works. We're like, yeah. uh? It's all about product knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about product knowledge. But that gets them to think like, oh, we don't really have sales training like we thought, right? So we're asking them what their present situation is, how long they've been doing it that way, and what caused them to do it that way. And it doesn't matter if you sell insurance. You know, I was training a, some salespeople today that sell insurance. And we're talking about, we're finding out what type of financial protection do they have in place now in case something happens to their husband or wife if they pass away. We're finding yep. out what their situation is, okay? So it doesn't matter the industry. Then I'm like, okay, now It's that a very I'm important sad, point though, because it really doesn't matter the industry. Yeah. Like people need to, and no one, everyone out there yelling at their cars that they're listening to, it does matter. No, 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 it really doesn't. Like I've, I've had these conversations in- large scale B2B with German textiles factories. And I've had these same conversations in a coaching environment where I'm selling one-on-one -on -one sales training. I've sold business coaching to trades, right? To blue collar workers. I've sold digital marketing services to pretty much every type of business, but also fitness. I've also yeah. used this to sell fitness programs. Yeah. Right. This is, this is sales, right? Yeah. This is, so like it really does work. Obviously there is some nuance to each industry, but the framework stays relatively similar. That's, and that's why we get the duplication with any industry. That's why people are amazed. Like, how do you get that type of increase in sales for an insurance company that sells insurance, but then you go over and these car dealerships, you've increased their sales by 600% this year. And then you go from car sales and you're teaching them how to sell fitness programs. So, and then we can take them from the fitness industry and we train realtors how to sell commercial or residential properties and they blow up. we got real estate agents that make 500,000 a year, a million dollars a year, right? We even train- Not Lions. GCI, <laughs> not GCI, <laughs> take home revenue. I'll yeah, right, that. exactly. You and we even train you know, Ryan, Ryan Serhant's team, right? So we train his salespeople how to sell his influencer products and everything, right? The guy that sells a billion dollars worth of real estate in New York, the number one real estate agent in New York. He's done, I think, 500 million this year. Yeah, only 500 million by March. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. those sales skills don't matter. No big deal. And then we teach how do we, and then we train a company how to sell their artwork on a floor. But it's the same thing is we use the same framework. We use connecting questions and situation <laughs> questions and problem awareness questions. So the way I got that order, Matt, was really by trial and error. And because I, you know, when I first started, I had consequence questions where solution awareness questions were. Well, that wouldn't work. I would, I would ask consequence <laughs> question and then solution awareness question. I'm like, that doesn't work as powerfully. I'm going to put the consequence questions after solution awareness. So it took me just trial and error of figuring out where they needed to go to get the best result for what I was selling at that point. And then I remember when I first got into sales training in 2017, I'm like, okay, because uh, about a year and a half, two years before, people were coming to me from many different industries. Like, dude, I heard you make like two or $3 million a year as a salesman. Train me how to sell this. And I'm like, I don't know. I've never sold that. And so it was challenging to me because I'm like, how do I sell that? And I would write it out scripts, you know, and I would just train people. And I was like, wow, this really works for any industry. Like what I'm doing in my industry, I can go and train somebody in a completely different industry, the sales structure, and they're getting the same results that I'm getting. And that gave me the idea of like, maybe I can train any industry how to do this. And that's how 7th Level was born, as you know. Exactly. When I came into 7th Level, I came in, I saw you in a presentation on sales business. That's what really got me kind of dialed in. And then from there, I bought yeah. the NEPQ course. Yeah. And then I reached out to you for coaching because I understood and I was like, hmm, this is really, this is the way to do it. But for me, like I, the way that I learned personally, I was ADHD kid. 
I'm very much like a monkey see monkey do type person. So like yeah. in the military, you learn, you get attached to someone who's done the job before you, and then they teach you how to do the job. And then you teach someone that's just how it works. Right. That's so I was works, the snipers. Yeah. That's, that's how we, that's how everyone taught each other. It's a very small community. So I was right. like, well, I could read this all day long. I can, I watched all the videos. I went through it like five, six times. I was like, no, I just want to get, I'll just pay money to have somebody <laughs> speed this up for me. <laughs> and then when you took me through the script, I was like, Oh, this is why it's all happening. Yeah. And for me, like the real click moment was like, cause I want people to know, like having a script is great. Right. And I think it will benefit everybody having a script, but understanding the concepts of why things are building on each other in the way they're building. Like when you're going through connection situation, problem awareness, like you're finding a serious problem. Like yeah. what is What is an actual problem? And that can be, like having a big empty spot on your wall for artwork. And, you know, that could make you self-conscious when you have people come through the house because your artwork isn't up to scratch because you live in a, you know, snooty, snooty area, whatever, right? Or it can be that your business isn't making enough money and your salespeople are poorly trained or whatever, right? It can be a lot of different things. So once we find that real problem, then we're going to go after like the solution. The solution is not only going to be, it's not just, it's, it's a tangible yeah. and an emotional driver, which is super key. Yeah. But those tangible and emotional drivers don't mean anything unless you get the real problem. So you've got to have the ability and the tonality and the structure and that different types of questions to be able to get the real problem, which is like, that's why in problem awareness, like we have, it's like 400 problem awareness questions. You know what I mean? You can just go, that doesn't seem right to me. Let me just keep probing. I'll clarify, I'll probe, I'll clarify. Once we yeah. get the real what, then we can get the real why, which is the emotion. And from there, there's genuine consequence because if, if we future pace out somebody's life or business, having solved the problem, gotten the tangible, which gives you the emotional, which people only act on emotion. That's the only reason you only eat because you're hungry because you, you're, you know, because you need to eat, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm hungry and it would make yeah. you sad to not eat. Right. So like once you future pace that beautiful life out, then you take it away in a consequence question. Yeah. And it, once you have the real skill level to be able to identify when someone is genuinely contemplating the consequences of inaction, then you yeah. go to commitment, get a commitment, then you go to presentation, you present, and you've carried that emotion through. And it's just, a, it, honestly, like when it was like that glass shattering, I was like, holy shit, I've lost out on a lot of money because I haven't, I haven't figured this out. And when I yeah. saw it all in alignment, I was like, yep, this makes total sense. Well, it's crazy. I remember you came to me probably 15, 16 months ago. We're not talking about a decade ago or anything. And you, you're you already doing well. I mean, you're already making like 20 grand a month, sometimes 25 grand a month. I mean, that's a lot of money for a salesperson, but you're like, dude, I'm hitting my head against the wall. Cause I'm like, I, I'm, I should be making twice as much, but so many people cancel. They don't show up for the appointments. Cause you had been taught, like I had been taught early on in sales to push, push, push. And you were very clever and witty at like trapping them into things where they couldn't push back. But that yeah. only goes so long. I mean, you're only going to get so many people that way. There's so many people that just don't go for that, right? That you could have made. And I remember after our like second session, you're like, I get it. You're like, you're just like, dude, I get it. Like, I know now what you're talking about in the training videos. It's like a light bulb. I remember the, the moment you said that you're like, it was like a light bulb came out of my head. And then even a couple of weeks later, you were like already crushing. I'm like, dude, this guy's picking this up really quick. So it's like a light bulb went off in your head. I just, I just remember you're like, dude, I get it. I'm, this makes sense now. Yeah. Like, I call that when you get plugged into the matrix. Yeah. You go, oh, I see. <laughs> like, oh, I see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. You can tell like, you know, cause we, we had one of our inner circle members, Callie, yeah. super new to sales. Yeah. And like, she's been grinding through for the last sort of four or five months. She sent in a circle probably two months ago. Yeah. And she's crushing every deal in sight right now. Like she's yeah. making, she's making eight, nine sales a week at the moment. And these are, these are big deals. These are like, you know, these are $30,000 deals. So in, yeah. the, in the coaching space, it's, a, it's about as big as they sort of get in, 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 sure. in sort of relative terms. She's going to make like fifteen to $20,000 a month for like this month, you know, yeah, going from like, but months. going, but going from three. Yeah. Like she's gone from three to 20, like in an instant. And I was like, oh, congratulations. You plugged in. And I was like, I see, I see it all now. <laughs> I see the yeah. ones and zeros. I know she boxed me about a month ago and she's like, I get it. I finally get it. And I'm just like, dude, it took you two months, but Hey, I'm glad, I'm glad you, I'm glad you know the pill. I'm glad you took the pill now or the red pill or the whatever. She's like yeah. plugged into the matrix now. Yeah. So we, we've like, yeah, she's, she's absolutely crushing it, which is great. Yeah. And it's really interesting when you see people, when they go, Oh, like they don't, it's not like they've memorized the script cause that's fine. And that's, I think a useful thing to do. But, you know, you're going to have to go off script. 
you know, yeah. it's a conversation. Yeah, not every conversation you, is perfect. Yeah, but it's it's when you understand the concepts, you're like, I have to stack these things on top of each other in this particular way. And as long as that that is done, then I leave myself in the absolute best position to be able to get the sale. And that's even like when you don't get the sale, you're fine with it because yeah. you know that you did your process, which yeah. works a majority of the time. Exactly. You, you don't, you don't really have like any, you didn't make the sale. So you're not like, Oh my God, I shouldn't make the sale. Cause you knew you, you did exactly what you were supposed to do. You follow the sales process. And you know, if you do that day in and day out, most of the time it's going to work for you. There are going to be a few people or prospects. You just, they can't get the funding together. They just, they don't see the problem that they have or whatever, but if you do that day in and day out on all your calls and all of your appointments, you're going to get most of the people. Whereas yeah. somebody selling the same thing you are might get a five or ten percent conversion rate, and you're getting a thirty or forty percent conversion rate following that process, you're making three times the amount of money, probably yeah. working less hours. Yeah, one of our accounts that that we provide the sales reps for at seventh level, it's an it's a it's a very high quality Amazon account. We're closing yeah. at thirty two percent. The industry standard for Amazon and like uh, ecom is five. Yeah. And this guy, like we we had to have a chat with him yesterday because delivery team is like, what is happening? <laughs> like, <laughs> we can't what keep is, up. There's too what many is sales. Happening? Stop we're selling. Making, we're making four a day, right? So yeah. four sales a day. They just like, we, what is it? What is going on? Cause they're used to getting five a month, you know? So <laughs> it's know, uh, now they're getting about 50 a month now. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's really, it's really funny, but yeah, like I think that was the, one of the big things for me. I think one of the, one of the best things about having a system is like, is the ability to kind of detach from the sale because like, I, I like to think I'm genuinely detached from all the outcomes of sales. I obviously want to get the sale. Like that's not what it is. It's not wanting to get the sale, yeah. but it's like, if I don't, as long as I can sit back and go, no, 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 I did the process. Like I, I did it. And I was like, so me and Marco are having conversations. He's like, yeah, I had this inner circle call. I didn't close them. We're like, that's weird. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> we closed like, like nine out of 10 of those. Yeah. He's like, that was weird, wouldn't it? Like, yeah. He's like, oh, well. <laughs> like, oh, well, <laughs> that's fine. Oh, well. His, his or her loss. They're just going to sell less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So whenever we bring on people, like that's one of the big things that we want to get across them. It's like, you will be so much happier as a salesperson if yeah. you can figure out how to detach. And a lot of people talk about it. But I don't think anyone really explains what it means very well. And it's like detaching from the sale is not not caring if you make the sale. Yeah. Right. But it's knowing that like all you can do is what you can do. And in reality, we really can't convince anyone to do anything. Anyone who's ever been in a relationship is fully aware or had children. You can't convince people to do stuff. All you can do is get them to convince themselves. Yeah. And we're not Tony Robbins. We're not going to have three hour interventions with people, nor should we try. Right. So like all we can do is like, I have a process. I'm really confident in it. I, I work on it every single day. I try and do as best I can. And that works X percentage of the time. Yeah. And I'm and happy it, with that. No, exactly. Yeah. And I, I want to make sure everybody understands. So I think you bring up a, a really good point. When we say detach yourselves from making the sale, that doesn't mean that we don't want you to make the sale. Good Lord. I mean, Matt, when we trained him and stuff, Matt went from making like 25 grand a month to $100,000 a month in commissions. Obviously, he was closing sales, right? He wasn't just like, hey, I hope you buy at the end or call me back if you really want to buy. You don't do that and make 100000 a month, right? No. So what he's saying is you're detaching yourself externally. So you're you're detached because you're you're seeing if you can help. Now, you know, most of the people we talk to, we can help because they book calls with us, right? Or they respond to an ad or we know they have problems. So we know 99% of the people we talk to, we can help in any industry that we're training. Okay. So we, we're detached. We always say detached from the expectations of making the sale. And instead we're focused on whether or not there's a sale to be made in the first place. Now, internally, are we trying to make the sale? Well, hell yeah. That's why we're on the phone with them, right? So yeah, we're going to do our job. best. <laughs> that's our job. That's what you get paid to do. You get paid to help your prospects find problems they didn't think they had, and you get paid to sell them your product or service to solve specific problems for them. If you can't sell them, they're not getting problems solved, and that's your fault. They're staying in status quo, okay? So when we say detach yourself from making the sale, like the expectations of making the sale, focus on whether or not there's a problem, that's what we mean. But it doesn't mean that you just don't show that externally where you're like, <laughs> 
you know, commission breath. I always call that commission breath. Like you got to get rid of the commission breath and keep that internally inside. Yeah. But then also it's just like, I mean, for me, I used to get pissed off when I didn't make a sale. You know what I mean? But I think I was pissed off because I felt like I had lost a battle. Yeah. It's like, I never got angrier when I was a kid. I used to wrestle. If I lost a wrestling match, I was livid. Right. Yeah. Because I felt like that was like, that was like a, a human being versus human being, caveman versus caveman. He would have beat me to death and taken my family. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those things. Right. So I think I, and the way that I sold was not dissimilar to that. <laughs> it was, it was pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. I listen. I have some of those calls recorded. I should send them to you. They're pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're all taught in the beginning that selling is more adversarial. It's like human yeah. against human trying to manipulate them to buy. But what we train you on with NEPQ is making selling collaborative. Yeah. You Which with them it's just far them. less stressful. So much yeah. more profitable. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot more profitable, but yeah. So it's like, that's one of the things is, you know, salespeople get so discouraged and frustrated when they don't make a sale. And I really feel like the reason why that is, is because like you don't have a process that you're really confident in. So yeah. you're kind of like flying by the seat of your pants. It ends up being, you end up seeing it as like a boxing match. You're going in a fight. That's why people need, like, I don't understand why people need like pre-call routines. I see that all the time. I'm like, but you're just having a conversation with another person. Like, do yeah. you need to pump yourself up to go and order a coffee at Starbucks? Like it's, <laughs> It's honestly like, it's like, is that like, is that, is that person on the till? Like, Oh, there's a, there's a sale coming in. I better get pumped up, do five minutes of meditation and 25 push ups. It's like, there's yeah. no, I don't believe you need to be in a flow state to sell things. Like, and I really, whenever people say it, I'm like, Hey guys, like if you think you need to be in some sort of flow state before a call, then you're going to find reasons to screw that call up because you weren't in flow state. Yeah. Well, you, you lack excuses. certainty when you, when you don't have a working sales structure to follow a sales process that works with human behavior, you lack certainty. And so you wing it, right? You're, yeah. you're, yeah. you're, you're taught how to sell like human against human. We're teaching you how to sell collaborative, you working with the person to help them find and solve problems, it makes selling not stressful. It makes selling really fun. You look at yourself as like, Hey, I'm a problem finder and problem solver. I'm not a product pusher. Like don't be the product pusher. Like 97% of salespeople are probably more than that are like, it's really an exhausting, stressful job that doesn't pay that much. You want to be the problem finder and problem solver that gets paid big bucks to solve problems. What do you think the most, like, I guess in terms of industry, what do you think, I guess, are the most archaic industries in terms of sales and the ones that are sort of more towards the new, the new. I, I, I think the, the most, the biggest industry that still sells so over to the old way is the car industry. Yeah. I think that's, that's definitely one of the industries that is still selling like it's 1965. Uh, and it's not their fault. Like we, we train the largest car dealership, our company, Matt and I train the largest car dealership in Canada. It's called 401 Auto. They're a huge company. I mean, they've got like 40 or 50 dealerships up in Canada. And this last year during the pandemic, we got them almost 100% increase in sales in Canada. And during the pandemic, most of Canada was closed down. down. Shut down. Car dealerships, you could not go in a car dealership. You literally, car dealerships were locked for about six months of the year, seven months or you couldn't go in one. So we taught them how to get on the phones and start calling leads and actually selling cars and people would come and they would drive the car out of the dealership. They couldn't go into the damn store and they got almost a hundred percent increase during the pandemic. This year, when everything opens up, I bet they're going to get a 300% increase. And now they're buying- Now they have the skill. Well, now they're buying up all these other car dealerships that went under. Yeah. This, year, this, this year, they've already bought like 10 or 12 other dealerships. So they're going to buy like another 10 or 12. They're going to have like 70 or 80 dealerships up there. They're going to, yeah. they're, they're like McDonald's now. Like they just own everything. That's awesome. And what do you think is sort of one of the industries that's more towards the, the forefront 
of the new model of selling? I would say one of the industries that I think is getting more towards the forefront is the financial services industry, just because of all the regulation. So they're more consultative selling because you're speaking to more of a sophisticated buyer. They use a lot of like, I think, spend selling techniques, which are good. I don't think they're great because it's still, you're asking like logical based questions, like what's your biggest problem or what keeps you awake at night with your investments, right? And just like, there's not enough emotion being pulled out from there for them to act like they, you know, build urgency in there, but it's definitely better than like boiler room selling for sure. Absolutely. Then the coaching consulting industry is a, a very, I think they're, cause it's relatively new in terms of like the, how, in terms of like, I guess in terms of an industry, it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite new, but I think like selling information, it provides some difficulties, right? You know what I mean? In terms of compared to selling a product, uh-huh. right? Because there's no tangible yeah, you you're get. Selling so, yeah. yeah, so you're selling information and then from there that person has to then apply that. So I think like it requ- I think I think it requires it's a, it's a tricky one but that's why, that's why I like it a lot because I think it's it's very interesting and you have to sort of really navigate a lot of weeds because there's a lot of self-doubt, self-belief stuff because like at the end of the day all they're getting is information. Yeah. So they have to apply the information product in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're not driving it home off the dealership. <laughs> Exactly. So I was like, yeah, that it seems like a very pure form of selling because yeah. you're just selling someone an idea. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, here we go. It's an idea, a concept. You're going to learn a concept and hopefully apply it. Like, so like, so like selling sales training is a particularly interesting thing to sell, but it's super fun to sell because yeah. you can break all sorts of rules. <laughs> <laughs> you can. We slap salespeople and companies around sometimes because we're like, they're talking about and complaining about their lack of results and the inconsistencies of their salespeople and they're losing sales to low cost competitors. And we're just like, do you want to keep doing that? I mean, you you can keep doing that if you want to. And someone's like, (laughs) slap them. They're like, no, we don't want to. Well, why? I mean, why, I mean, why not just keep doing what you've been doing? Well, we can't do, we do. It's like, we can slap them around a little bit more. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. As well. One of the lines I like to use is like, well, would I be representing, like, do you want a sales trainer to let someone get off the phone without purchasing? Is that what you want to learn? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, then you put me in a tough position, man. Like, I'm, I'm in a position where now I have to sell you. So are you open to, to learning from someone who, 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 who gets the deals done? Yes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm just, exactly. I'm, we, get, we get away so much with, uh, yeah, with you know, individual salespeople and consultants and selling that way because it's like, well, do you, do you want to learn how to, so when they say they don't have enough money, do you want to learn how to overcome that objection? Or do you just not want me to overcome that for you where you don't buy and you just walk away and nothing ever changes for you? Yeah, that's a tough one to get <laughs> yeah. out of. You're like, I really want to learn how to overcome it. But in order to learn, I, he has to overcome me. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's a tough one. It's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so then we help them overcome it with their own concern. And they're like, oh my gosh. Do you want to learn yeah. how to do that with your prospects? Yeah. yeah. And then they're all ready to go. I mean, that's why we have like an 80 to 90% of people yeah, on our calls that enroll because they want, they see the results, right? I mean, we've had over 2000 testimonials in the first two years. So they're in our Facebook groups. They see the results. I mean, we post three to five testimonials every day, plus all the other testimonials that individual members post themselves. I mean, it's like yeah. so much social proof. It's like, you almost want to throw up. You see so much of it every day. So it's like pretty obvious that sales people get results by going through our training and companies get their yeah. results. So I love getting on. I love when you guys get on with salespeople and like slap them around. I think it's awesome. They need it. They need <laughs> slap around. It's so. fun. I think that they, you know, it's a, it's a fun conversation because they, they like the process and they we like, you know, you can kind of play around with it, but it's, 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 it's an, it's an enjoyable, it's an enjoyable thing. It's always, it's always fun. I like it. I've got a, I've got a call next week. The guy that I've been chasing for four months. So we'll get him. <laughs> is it a company um, or is it just an individual sales? Well, it's just a guy when I when I was the one doing the full time sales for it. He just didn't have any liquidity at all. He was in yeah. a third world country and now he's uh, back in a better place. So you know, now because I sold with him. Well, because I sold with him collaboratively. Yeah. I still gave myself the best chance to get in the sale. But then once you realize like you just have to pipeline somebody, then you just pipeline them and have a regular touch base. You know, hey man, how you doing? What's everything going? Together, there's nothing we can do, but now he's coming back to you. Exactly. So I can I can retrospectively change my clothes rate. Beautiful. 
Now you have a 91.9% close rate instead of a exactly. 91.3% close rate. That's what matters. That's what matters. <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, great to have everybody on here. You know, go to our Facebook group. If you want to learn these type of skills, we're just kind of keeping it out here a little bit, but go to our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, Sales Revolution. There's a couple of questions we ask on our intake form. Answer those questions. Join the group. Right when you join, you're going to get pinged a training that we have. It's a three, it's a three, I don't know, it's at least an hour or two training on how to prevent objections from actually happening in your prospect's mind. Can you imagine that? We just ping that right over to you for free. We go live in our Facebook group about four to five times a week, Matt and I do, and other sales trainers, and train you these type of skills every day. Love to have you in there, sales revolution, and we'll see you on the inside. Matt, any last words? No. Have, have a good day. Enjoy yourself. Go out there, make some sales, join the Facebook group, learn some skills, and... uh if uh, make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that kind of good stuff. Help us Love out. It. Let us know you're listening. All right, guys. All right, Have a good day. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Now, if you're serious about joining the top 1%, I mean the top 1%, and you want to experience more training content just like this, click the links right over there. Right over there, they're exactly what you need to see next. You see, I release new episodes featuring top salespeople and sales authorities multiple six-figure, high six-figure, even seven-figure earners. And if you're new here, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button right below, right below, and join our new Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You see, it's free, and there's a link in the description below just for you. We put it there for you. Finally, I make posts on Facebook and Instagram each and every day with more tips and training. So be sure and follow me and turn on your notifications. So make a comment in the first seven minutes to any of my latest posts, share this episode, and there's a very real chance that you're going to win some killer prizes. And here's the thing, don't sit on the sidelines, don't be like everyone else, get into the game, join the sales revolution, stay active, get involved, learn the right skills, and we will show you how to take your life and income to a level that most only dream about.